Kerwin's Game Store, the best place in gaming. Is it Yvette Garbador or Dark Knight Garbador? Hello everybody, we have um, our round two feature match here. We have Marcus Guy on the uh, left here playing Thunderous Deoxys Curum. Um, and we have Eddie Zito on the right playing um, uh, Yvette Garbador. Um, Eddie is taking a mulligan, so Marcus will be able to draw. Eddie Zito has gotten a basic. His opponent will be taking his um, card for the Eddie's Mulligan. Um. Alright, both players have set up and they've set their prizes and they're ready to begin. Eddie is elected to go first. Here we see um, a thunderous start with two Kiram on bench and a Deoxys from a Marcus Guy, very strong start. Uh, it's always optimal to get the uh, Raid Knuckle off as soon as possible. And he's going first, so we see he's got a um, end hand and a not so optimal start. Uh, we see a with the random receiver. So now we know Eddie's um, a spec. Having a hard time trying to find that Juniper, trying to get those uh, dark energies into the discard pile. There's the Juniper. What's interesting here is the uh, Trubbish in the active. I'm interested to find out how he's going to get that onto the bench to um, start shutting down abilities. We see the end come down. Um, it seems Eddie is just trying to get the uh, random receiver in the discard for Sableye. I think what will be interesting here is the um, how the Kiram Frost Spears work out in Marcus's damage calcs. Because um, the Frost Spears, in addition to uh, Frozen City damage um, for Marcus Guy's list, will uh, make one hit KOing uh, Dark Rye and Yvetal a lot easier. Here we see the Dark Rye come down, so if uh, we get a Dark Energy onto that uh, Trubbish or a Fold Stone, he'll be out of play. We see the Computer Search. Um, Eddie opting to discard the um, Ultra Ball and the Float Stone. Really interesting he's not going to put on the Chubbish. Um. I suppose he feels like um, having the Dark Ryan play is good enough. That's uh, true. What could be interesting here is the um, pair of energy switch within Eddie's deck. So he could attach to the Garbodor, or not Garbodor, uh, Chubbish. Um, before it becomes uh, Garbodor and he attaches his tool, and then he can just energy switch it off later. Um, so, because once that tool comes down, he'll no longer have the free retreat, so he's gonna have to focus on getting that out of play first. We see the Yvetal come down off the computer search, and um, he passes turn. We see a Frozen City and Deoxys come down on Marcus's side. Starting off very monster heavy, and digging for even more. <laughs> Very strong start. Um, what's interesting here about Marcus's list is that 
he opts not to play any Genesect. Um, he just plays 40 Axis, 3 Thunderous, and 4 Kyurem. It's very standard, um, very focused on his uh, Blizzard Burns. Uh, there's no Kelio. His uh, Pokemon line is very cu uh, cut and dry. Ooh. He Junipers away, 2 Energy. Um, kind of interesting to see that he doesn't play the uh, Prism on Thunderous, probably assuming he'll draw another. We see in his last card there, he did pick up the Prism. Uh, I believe he also got rid of another Juniper with that Juniper. Very risky play on Marx's part, but it appears to have paid off since he got both energy in the discard pile. Um, he raided Knuckles for 60 on the uh, Trubbish and puts the Prism on Kiram. Passes to Eddie. We see Eddie glancing in his discard pile. We do see the dark energy in Eddie's hand, so potentially he could attach to the um, Trubbish and get that at play, but he opts to Juniper that and the Pal Pad away. Hoping for a dark patch, most likely. Very interesting choice on Eddie's part. He does hit the dark patch. We see another Evitol EX come down, and we do see a Floatstone in Eddie's hand. So he's no longer going to need the. Uh, Dark Energy to get Trubbish out of play. We do see his attached return. Um, interesting to see that he attached the two separate Evitals rather than attack right off the bat. He puts the Float Stone on the Trubbish. And then, uh, I'm thinking, I do believe that's a random receiver in Eddie's hand in addition to the Lissandre, so next turn we could either see him uh, trying to go through his deck farther. Um, he opts to retreat and send forward the Yiva Taliax, which is an interesting choice considering there's no Garbodor on board. So that Yiva Tal is going to be taking a uh, total of 120 base if Marcus decides to Raiden Knuckle. One interesting thing here is the fact that we have yet to see either a Verbank or a Laser come down on Eddie's side. Um, those are very key in this matchup, considering Marcus doesn't play Verizian. The poison damage really helps add up um, Eddie's damage calcs, um, since even though Yvetal technically has an unlimited damage cap, uh, it's very difficult to achieve a one-hit KO on single energy attackers like Thunderous without the help of Laser Bank. We see a switch card come down, and the Kyurem comes forward. Potentially, we could see a Frost Spear here. We see the Plasma Energy. Um, Frost Spear can be very important here because it'll stop the uh, Trubbish from turning into Garbodor. It's also going to do a, do a very decent amount of damage to that Yvetal with those Deoxys. The 60 will put it in range for a one-hit KO from Raiden Knuckle. We do see a Skyla come down. For the, for, muscle, oh, the band. muscle band. Ooh. That'll put the Frost Spear up to 80 damage, and he will take a prize off that Trubbish this turn. We do see um, the Muscle Band actually come down on the Thunderous EX rather than the Kyurem, which is an interesting choice. Probably feeling that the um, Thunderous is more powerful yeah. in this matchup. I mean, to a Yvetal, it can be 140 with that uh, Muscle Band and then an extra 20 with those DXs. That's um, if one of those Kyurem goes down, then the uh, he can put another Deoxys on his bench. And then with the Muscle Band, his Raiden Knuckle can one-hit KO a Yvetal EX. Um, Very being, powerful. Solid 90 damage and doubled by that weakness. So, Eddie's definitely going to have to watch out for that. We see the random receiver come down, and he's tailing through his deck, trying to find a supporter. We see the N. Um, that'll be a little bit interesting right now, considering it'll put Marcus down to five cards in hand. Mm -hmm. This seems like a very uh, hard matchup, and Eddie's off to a very slow start. Especially with that. Ooh. We see the Tool Scrapper come down on the Muscle Band, trying to prevent any um, chaos on the other Yvetal. We see the Muscle Band come down on that Yvetal. Um, 
Eddie's debating whether or not he wants to play N or Lissandre. He opts for the N. Now, it's really rough is that Thunders can still take out the act of Yvetel right now. And I do think, since we see the Dark Riot EX on Eddie's side on the bench, that um, he could potentially retreat and try an Evil Ball if he hits the energy for the other Yvetel EX. Um, Marcus is also running uh, the... He's running three Lissandre instead of uh, the Gise uh, Genesect, which yeah. means he has to use up his supporter for the turn in order to... Uh, bring out the Yvetel if Eddie ends up retreating. That could be a little more high impact in this matchup, because once Garbodor comes down, the Genesect cannot red signal. So Lissandre is live all the time. Um, there's no supporter blocking. So... TDK also relies a lot on its bench, and the, the power from Deoxys is for uh, good calculations on KOs and whatnot. The Lissandres have a lot of synergy with the Frost Spears. We do see a double colorless come down. Um, potentially, we could we see the laser. Very high impact, so this is going to be a KO if he opts to use the Evil Ball attack. Um, 30 from uh, Laser Bank in addition to the 120 from uh, Evital's attack will be plenty. Um, although we could see Eddie opt to leave the Kiram uh, asleep on the board with 10 HP left using Y Cyclone, which would be interesting because it would allow him to build up the Evital. We do see him use the Y Cyclone. He glances at his hand, and it appears he is going to attach to the Evital with no energy on it, which is a very interesting choice. It appears he's trying to conserve his resources. Um, one thing that might come into play here is that even though Marcus's Kiram is remaining asleep, Marcus plays a total of four switch in his TDK list, meaning that he'll be able to switch right out of this poison if he can hit any one of those copies. We've already seen one come down in the early game, meaning that we're down to a um, trio of switches in game, um, if none of them are prized. Uh, we see a blend energy come down on the Kiram. And then we see a Colrus Machine. Um, he could be trying to load up the other Kiram for a Frost Spear. He also added on to a Muscle Band, or uh, added a Muscle Band onto that uh, Thundra, so it's going to be doing even more damage again. We see the end come down. Eddie only playing two Tool Scrappers, and one of them being in his discard is going to be very rough to get rid of any more Muscle Bands in there. Considering Eddie only plays a single copy of Sableye in his uh, list, it'll be definitely hard to retrieve those. So if Marcus plays his tools conservatively enough, he'll definitely be in a good position in the late game to do a lot of damage. Oh, that's that switch you were talking about. Yep, we see one of the uh, four switch cards come down. Very smart. And we see the other Thunders come into play, ready to dish out a uh, KO on that Yvitali X, putting Marcus down to three prizes. Marcus glances through his discard pile for the Raid Knuckles, trying to figure out which um, energy to attach. He opts to attach a Plasma to Deoxys to power connect in the late game. That could be very high impact in this matchup simply because Yvetal requires a lot of energy to take KOs, and Deoxys can capitalize on that. Um, although, since Marcus chooses not to play lasers and he plays um, Frozen City instead of Verbank, It'll be very interesting this matchup to see um, how the damage calculations work out since Laser Bank makes a lot of your calculations very easy in um, TDK. That's also one of the main reasons a lot of players uh, use uh, Frost Spear very often. Another thing that's very rough about this matchup that uh, a Kyrum's Frost Spear with the 2D axis and a Muscle Band can take it out. Yeah. Ooh, we see a laser come down on Eddie's side. Um, he did strip the uh, Thunderous of its other um, muscle band. <laughs> and uh, the laser comes down. He does not hit the sleep. He tries for another laser, trying to get that sleep in. Um, though he misses it once more. 
even if he had hit the sleep then it's kind of a really uh, interesting way to go about using your resources considering that um, when you think about it he'll just switch out of it once he hits those cards because he plays so many switch cards mm -hmm. uh, Eddie right now just trying to do some damage to that Thunderous and load up other Kyurums What's interesting here is that if that Thunderous goes to the uh, bench, um, it will be two Night Spheres away from a KO. Um, it'll also be very easy to um, KO if it comes back forward, it's severely weakened. Um, if Marcus opts to leave the Thunderous in play, it'll be up to 150 upon passing turns, so no matter what Eddie does, if he chooses to wall for the turn, Whatever he chooses to do, he will. Uh, Thunderous will die, and Eddie will take two prizes going back into Marcus's turn. Um, that could be okay. Um, sometimes yep. passing to your opponent and having a Pokemon get knocked out by laser damage can be risky. We're not going to have to worry about that, though, because Marcus has opted to use another one of his switch cards to send the Curum forward. He's going to Frost Spear for 60 on the active Uvital and bump the one on the bench to 50. That puts both Uvitals in range of a Raiden Knuckle KO. Or, or Lizard Brain. Yeah. Um, it's also making Deoxys' uh, damage calculations with uh, Power, uh, not Power Connect, uh, Helix Force a lot easier. Very true. We can see the one Plasma Energy on the... Deoxys sitting there. Yeah, that Deoxys can spring forward at any moment here. Uh, what's interesting here, though, is that we have not seen a single Rainbow Energy come down on Marcus's side. Now, he does play four in his list. Mm -hmm. um, if he doesn't hit the, one of the Rainbows or Prisms, though, he will not be able to uh, use Helix Force. Um, his blends will not help him in that regard. Um, Though Blend is a flexible card, it does not offer Psychic Energy to the Pokemon it's attached to. So, evidently, he will not be able to use uh, Helix Force using Blend. So he needs to hit some of the um, more generous energy uh, cards. Mm -hmm. We see the KO on the Kyurem. And uh, Marcus decides to promote the Thunderous, which is interesting here. The Yvitol is in one hit KO range from Yvitol, uh, uh, Raiden Knuckle, which is very important. A one hit KO here definitely could decide the fate of the game to an extent, um, considering the other Yvitol EX is extremely weak as well. Um, mm -hmm. Eddie's only taken one prize so far, really struggling to mount any sort of offensive. I feel the reason he brought up that uh, Thunderous instead of the one Kyurem that's loaded is because an Evil Ball can do a very good amount of damage to that thing if something happens. Yeah. Um, we do see the Raiden Knuckle onto the new Thunderous on bench. Um, put the Prism on the Thunderous, which is an interesting choice. Um, now that Raiden Knuckle or Kyurem's Blizzard Burn, either way, could um, take a KO here. One thing that's interesting, though, if Eddie does decide to promote his Darkrai EX um, to maybe buy him some time, the, um... Oh, Eddie has opted to scoop. Oh, and Marcus Guy takes a very strong game one. Had Eddie um, actually promoted the Darkrai and stalled out a little bit, the, um... The lack of lasers in Marcus's list could definitely, um... have affected him. Because he would not be able to reach the um, 180 damage needed as easily, considering he'd need 40 axis in the muscle band, and the Dark Rye had no Frozen City damage on it. Uh, that's why lasers can be very good in um, TDK, because it allows you to reach those damage calculations. Uh, Eddie opted to go first in the second game. Going first could prove to be a um, good decision here. Eddie will be up on the draw. Um, but it will allow Marcus Guy to um, Raid Knuckle on his first turn, which could help, considering he's attacking for weakness on Yvitol. Um We saw that come into play in the last game here. Um, 
Weakness really adds up the damage, even though Marcus isn't playing lasers. Um, the 20 from Frozen City assisted as well in um, allowing Marcus to deal a uh, really solid KO towards the mid-game. Another choice that I think is interesting here is that uh, because he doesn't play lasers, uh, Marcus has opted for Computer Search as his ace spec. Um, hasn't really come into play in this game, um, but it definitely could uh, be important in game two, considering that um, it's a very aggressive card to allow him to search for any of his four switch cards to get out of those lasers. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't really need it uh, game one. We, I believe we only saw... Laser was only used on two Pokemon, and... And he double lasered on one, and he didn't hit the sleep on either. Um, regardless, though, those lasers, aside from damage just for a KO right afterwards, aren't really doing too much. Very true. Um, the first laser did put a Kyurem to sleep, but Marcus seeing the switch card at just the right time yeah. ended up getting out of a sticky situation. Evidently, the um, lasers aren't incredibly important in this matchup. Because, um, aside from dealing a KO right after, Marcus can just switch out if he's asleep. Um, and that's if he doesn't hit heads. So sleep really isn't the greatest um, status condition to use against Marcus. Um, not that it's a bad status condition, but just the sheer number of switch cards that are in his list are really affecting Eddie's ability to stall out while he gets set up. Um, we see Eddie take a mulligan. Um, Marcus has... One basic down. The player seems to be discussing something, joking a little bit perhaps about the results of the first game. Eddie draws his opening hand. We do see a Trubbish. Perhaps he's going to start. Yes, he's going to start Trubbish again. Um, could prove interesting, depending on um, Marcus's starter. We do see the Thunderous right off the bat, yet again. Um, now, if Eddie cannot force that... Um, Trubbish out of play, turn one. Um, it definitely could get KO'd by Raiden Knuckle with a Muscle Band and 2 Deoxys, or um, 4 Deoxys. You, uh, Marcus can one-hit KO it. So Eddie's priority here is going to be to let that Trubbish take as little damage as possible. Um, Garbodor will be really important if he can get it up this game. Stopping those Deoxys is really, really good in this matchup, especially since... Uh... Thunders does almost 170. Yeah. Just 40 Oxus on bench puts Thunders' Raid Knuckle up to 140 versus a Yvetal, mm -hmm. um, which is a very, very high impact. It's a very high, um, high number. We do see a non EX Yvetal come down. Uh, interesting choice. It's like a pseudo Dark Patch. I'm interested to see if Eddie retreats here and promotes the Yvetal, though he could be offering an easier prize. Um, it would be good to um, promote the Yvetal rather than the Trubbish. That way he can get that Garbodor going as soon as possible. Uh, like you said, the Power Connect on Deoxys is a really high impact ability. Eddie actually opts to leave the Trubbish in play here and passes to his opponent. We see Marcus rip a um, plasma. plasma. Yeah. I imagine he's going to search for either a Kiram to get those uh, Frost Spears moving or um, for Deoxys to get those damage calcs up. Either or a very good option considering Thunders can be the powerhouse in this matchup instead of Kyurem. Even doing more than Kyurem while not being so restricted. We do see a Chorus Machine come down after the Team Plasma Ball. Um, attaching a Plasma to the Deoxys so he can Helix Force in the late game. Mm. 
Now, I imagine Mark, uh, Marcus's intent here is to get that Trubbish imp uh, out of play as fast as possible. The, um, the sooner that goes down, the easier he can uh, take care of this game. Um, and I think that's it's really important to stress that. We see him Juniper away. Two Plasma Energy, a Colrus off machine. It's very rough. Um, Not as much with a Thunderous. We see a Deoxys inside. come down in a Frozen City. Um, he takes out the uh, very early Verbank that Eddie had set. We see two Deoxys on board and, and a kind of team. Yep, and we see a team plasma ball probably going for the third Deoxys. That'll put him up to 60 out of 70 for the Trubbish. Um, if he can hit one more Deoxys or a Muscle Band, he has this KO. And then Eddie's in a very tight situation with a Yuvetal up front versus a Thunderous. Especially considering that the uh, Thunderous will be able to KO the Yuvetal XY as well. We see the Raiden Knuckle for 60. Yep. Um, and we see the Plasma Energy come onto Karim, probably bracing for a uh, Frost Spear. I think that's actually an interesting choice because. Um, now, I'm unsure of the contents of his hand, but potentially he could have left the damage at 60. Very true. Um, that would put the Trubbish in range of a Frost Spear, which is very important. Um, later, it could potentially scare Eddie away from the uh, idea of putting the Trubbish on his bench, knowing that it could be sniped. Um, We see the pal pad come into play here. Eddie recycling his supporters, which could prove to be important. We see the retreat for the um, Evital XY, which is an interesting choice. Um, we definitely could see a Frost Spear come into play on the following turn here. The um, Frost Spear would do a substantial amount to uh, Evital XY and then um, take the KO on the Travis. But we do see a Skyla for the Muscle Band. Um, I do believe Marcus is just going to go for the one-hit KO with Thunderous here and bring forward the um, Trubbish. With the Muscle Band coming down, Thunderous is now doing 160 to that Evital after weakness. So we see Marcus searching through his discard for Ridden Knuckle. He takes the knockout oh, and, that, and that, he um... takes his first prize. That Frozen City is doing exact to a uh, Yvattle EX. Well, the manual energy attached, it's down yeah. right away. So Eddie's going to have to really rely on those dark patches there. Oh, we see the scoop. And Marcus Guy takes a um, very strong 2-0 win over Eddie Zito's Yvattle Garbador deck.